The world's largest energy firms and tech companies are putting big dollars behind climate tech. So where is the smart investment going? Catalyst with Shell Khan offers an authoritative guide to how we address climate change across the global economy. Catalyst, wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, this is Larry Mantle, and I'm excited to invite you to LAS Night at Dodger Stadium on June 23rd. Get your pair of tickets by supporting all the programming you value from LAS. Donate now at LAS.com slash Dodgers. Thank you. LAS Studios. Today on the LA Report, federal regulators seize a third regional bank and the second based here in California. Negotiations continue between writers and producers in Hollywood with the industry concerned a strike could be looming. California officials are faulted for missing data about sexual orientation and gender identity. They're essentially making entire swaths of the population invisible and essentially withholding uh, resources to help address any inequities they may be experiencing. Good morning. It's Monday, May 1st. I'm Suzanne Watley, and you're listening to the L.A. Report from L.A.S. 89.3. First Republic Bank branches are reopening this morning as branches of J.P. Morgan Chase Bank. That's because federal regulators seized the troubled First Republic earlier this morning. The San Francisco-based regional bank saw its deposits sold off to Chase, along with most of its assets, in a bid to head off further banking turmoil in the U.S. So First Republic depositors are safe, but not so its investors. This is the third mid-sized bank to fail in just two months. First Republic has struggled since the March collapse of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank, and investors and depositors had grown increasingly worried that it might not survive because of its high amount of uninsured deposits and exposure to low interest rate loans. The Writers Guild of America and Hollywood producers continue last-ditch efforts to avert a strike, with the WGA contract expiring at a minute past midnight Tuesday. The Guild and the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers are still talking, but there is concern throughout the film and TV production industry that a strike could be called, and that could disrupt work on hundreds of scripted movies, TV shows, and streaming productions. Shows that would be among the first to feel the effects would be the late-night talk shows. We'll keep you posted. Today is International Workers' Day, also known as May Day. This year, a coalition of local organizations has called for a rally and march in Los Angeles from Olympic and Broadway to the front of L.A. City Hall. This year, the theme is Solidarity in Power, and it will focus on rights to unionize, rights to strike, housing rights, and rights to citizenship. Fermin Vasquez is with the Coalition for Humane Immigrant Rights of Los Angeles and helped organize this year's event. We recently had that teacher strike from LAUSD. We're tying that back as a fight that we want to continue. A lot of the workers now were able to win better working conditions, and they were only able to do that because they had the right to strike and the right to unionize. 66 countries worldwide recognize May Day as an official holiday, not the U.S., though. Across California, there will also be demonstrations in Riverside, San Francisco, San Jose, and elsewhere. Here in L.A., that march will be starting at 4 o'clock this afternoon and travel a mile to City Hall beginning at 5. Representatives from the Federal Emergency Management Agency will be in San Bernardino Mountain communities in the coming weeks. LAist reporter Jill Replogle says they'll be helping residents and businesses apply for federal assistance to recover from the heavy winter storms. The unprecedented series of snowstorms in late February caused roofs and decks to collapse, and some businesses, including the main grocery store in Crestline, are still shut down. San Bernardino County officials estimate mountain residents suffered more than $143 million in damages. Homeowners and renters can apply for low-interest loans of up to $200,000 to repair damages to their homes and up to $40,000 to replace personal property. Storm victims could also qualify for grants to pay for things like temporary housing if their home is deemed unlivable. FEMA and the Small Business Administration are operating a disaster recovery center at the Twin Peaks Recreation Complex through May 19th. For LAist 89.3, I'm Jill Breplogle. And Jill will be up in the mountains this week checking on storm recovery. You can find more of her reporting online at laist.com. Coming up, questions arise about a diversity in medicine program based at UC Schools. 
This podcast is supported by the Norton Simon Museum, presenting all-consuming art and the essence of food, now on view. This expansive exhibition explores how artists responded to and shaped food cultures in Europe from the 16th to 20th centuries. With depictions of luscious fruits and vegetables, sumptuous feasts and bustling markets, food and drink appear nearly everywhere in the history of European art. All-consuming examines a range of relationships with eating and drinking, both positive and negative. More info at nortonsimon.org. Back now to the L.A. report. A recent state audit finds the California Department of Public Health has missed opportunities to collect data about people's sexual orientation and gender identity. CAP Radio's health care reporter Kate Wolf explains why that matters. The audit showed only 13 percent of public health forms that ask about demographics include questions about sexual orientation and gender identity. Dr. Carl Street is a national expert on this type of data collection. He says a more complete picture can give us information about risk factors for substance abuse and mental health issues, as well as long term health outcomes. Right now, he says, we don't know what we don't know. They're essentially making entire swaths of the population invisible and essentially withholding uh, resources to help address any inequities they may be experiencing. In a statement to CAP Radio, the state public health department acknowledged it has work to do to address the data deficit. In Sacramento, I'm Kate Wolf. A University of California training program aims to increase the diversity of medical students, but more research is needed, we're told, to know just how many of its graduates are practicing in medically underserved regions of the state. Stephanie O'Neill with KFF Health News has more. The program encourages students of color to pursue medical degrees, to diversify who practices medicine, and to ease the provider shortage in underserved communities. The UC system launched the program at its Irvine campus in 2004. Since then, it's expanded to all six UC medical schools. Participating students take specialized courses and are trained in clinical experiences to deliver culturally competent care. Students may also receive financial aid, scholarships, and leadership mentoring. In a March report to the legislature, UC administrators found more than half of program graduates are practicing in underserved areas. But researchers at the data analysis firm Mathematica recommend more long-term tracking to understand if graduates ultimately practice where they're most needed. I'm Stephanie O'Neill. In San Diego, Scripps Pier is home to the oldest continuous record-keeping of Pacific Ocean conditions dating back more than 100 years. A new study published by the Scripps Institution of Oceanography tracks surface temperature and salinity concentration from 2016 up till now. Researchers looked at historical trends in the weather phenomena known as La Nina and El Nino. Sierra Byrne led the study. Been looking at salinity, we're tracking freshwater. It's a proxy for where is this water that's coming out of these river maps going? Could be the same water that's carrying pollutants and contaminants that would be relevant for human health. When we have heavy rains, more debris from inland bodies of water get carried directly to the ocean. So keeping track of ocean salinity gives researchers a window into climate change over long periods of time. Researching when and how fresh water makes it to the ocean also helps track pollution and with more research could help improve conditions in coastal areas. Today, it will be mostly cloudy, drizzle in places this morning. High temperatures for the most part will be in the low to mid 60s. Thanks for listening to the LA Report. The AM edition is hosted by me, Suzanne Watley, and produced by Michael Cosentino, with assistance from producer Tyler Wayne. Our engineer is Brandon Bowles. Catherine Mailhouse is the Director of Content Development. Check back here at 4 for the PM edition. You can read more at LAist.com or listen live anytime on the LAist app or on the radio at 89.3 FM. Listeners like you help make the LA Report possible. Please donate at LAist.com slash join. And the LA Report is supported by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe quality journalism makes Southern California a better place to live. Studios.
This podcast is supported by Dignity Health Southern California Hospitals, including Glendale Memorial, St. Mary in Long Beach, Northridge Hospital, California Hospital in downtown L.A., St. Bernadine, and Community Hospital of San Bernardino. Across Dignity Health Hospitals and care sites, the well-being of patients is always the priority. To learn about emergency services, heart care, and healthy babies, you can visit DignityHealth.org SoCal. Dignity Health. Hello, human kindness.